But we still we can't solve this problem. We, this equation doesn't really give us enough information to be able to do much uh, in order to solve a problem given the load. Um, we still wouldn't be able to determine what this shear force is because, or this shear stress is because we don't know the shear force H. In order to to find out what the shear force H is, we have to determine what this force what this force due to the bending stress is right here. If you think about if you think about a, uh, a beam under a load, it's going to have a bending stress. And if you have a bending stress, you're going to have a force related to it. And in order to develop that force, uh, we need to think about um, what's happening on this plane, this plane A that we've cut out with a, with a thickness of dx. And if this is the cross section of the beam, looked at not the cross section, but we're looking at the beam, we're looking at it straight on. We're going to see that the the force along the neutral axis here, the force along the neutral axis here is going to be zero. And as you move towards the outer fibers, that force is going to increase. But what you're also going to find out is that the force on the left side. Of our of our, of our um, plane A here is going to be a little bit smaller than the force on the right side, and the moment on the left side is going to be a little bit smaller than the moment on the right side. And you can see that if you if you draw the the moment diagram for this type of load, and you'll see that if you're if you're looking at the section of the beam located between between um, the, 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 the beginning of the beam and the middle of the beam where the force is applied, you'll see that the moment is constantly increasing. So the moment on this side, the left-hand side, can be represented by m. The moment on the right-hand side is going to be m plus a little bit more, since the width of this is only dx, which is as the width approaches zero. So we can say that the force, the force acting on plane A, is going to equal the sum of the changes of forces over the area above the shear plane. And we also see that the resulting bending moment on plane A is going to be dm. Because when you sum up the moments, the m's are going to cancel out and you're left with dm. So dm is is the moment acting on plane A. So 